Zoo Adventures friends! It's so nice to see you today. Mondays and Wednesdays at 10 o'clock and we're so happy that you're with us on this fine day. Because I'm not sure when this is airing. <laughs> this is a taped episode. We're going to take you on a walk, on a trail walk, on a trail that's found here at the zoo. And you don't have to go in the park to visit the trail. It's called Purgatory Trail. And I think it's going to be fun to talk about where the name came from. And we're going to meet a really neat guy up here, Bob, our neighborhood naturalist. But for now, Steve's in front of the camera. The wonderful Leslie is behind. Well, thank you, Steve. Hello, everyone. You've been doing some amazing work. And it should be recognized, Miss Leslie, that's for sure. I'm doing a bow. Thank you. That's a, that's a wonderful bow. You kind of saw my shadow. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. That'll work. And you've earned that to the Thank nine. You. Um, one of the reasons that we're doing this now is we're going to kind of go up purgatory a few times this year to share the changes along the trail. And right now there's no leaves, no trees, anything like that. So Bob was like, this is a great time to come to kind of see a, that, that beginning process, which is really the end. And he's going to explain more about this, I hope down the road. He did say, when you come, to follow the blue markers. Can you find him a blue marker? And while we walk for a second, we're hoping this airs around March 15th because Arbor Day, Arbor Day, the tree day, is just after that. So that's kind of the idea of what we're going to be doing with you guys, all, all today. And I think that you'll enjoy meeting Bob and it's just a beautiful day to be out for a walk. Right, Leslie? Yes. So really, that's what we're doing. We're just going on a trail walk. It's a pretty day. Mm -hmm. Let's go get some steps in. Let's go find Bob. Man, yeah. this is really pretty though, isn't it, Leslie? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a little bit of a hill, but it's it is a, pretty. But it's not too long of a hike and you can, you can do it. Here's a nice, beautiful day. This is March 4th. Fourth? Yeah. <laughs> that we're taping this for you. Uh, and we're gonna meet Bob. Bob, our neighborhood naturalist is here. And he's gonna take us on a little tour of Purgatory Trails. Hey, Bob, why are you over there by the holly? Oh, you recognize this. I do know that one. I don't know very many, but I know that one, Bob. This one, uh, yeah, this is one of our, uh, oh, hi guys, by the yeah, way. Yeah, neighborhood <laughs> naturalist, Bob. I'm sorry. Say hi I'm to our being, digital friends. I'm being inconsiderate. Howdy, everybody, how are you? <laughs> I'll use my typical greeting. Hi, I'm Mr. Bob, your neighborhood natural. And we'll take you. And I'm smacking. And you're real. And you <laughs> apologize. You've met the Muppet before. I have met the Muppet. Before. So yeah, I want to make sure the, that we know the Muppet. When I met it prior, it it, it did not have eyes. No, we just so. we. That's its new. Uh, <laughs> yes, we, we've given it a little more personality. Excellent. So why are you here checking this out? Um, this is one of our native hollies. Oh, it's native. This is a native. Uh, no it's, kidding. It's out of the genus Ilex. Look at that. And uh, these are kind of interesting. Which you'll pointing. If, if you really look up high, you'll see that there are berries up oh, high. Oh, look, you there. So uh, it means that whoever is down here low that might be eating those berries, and I'm not sure who all does. I can't quite reach them for you guys. Yeah, whoever is down here low has eaten all the berries. Okay. Or they've fallen off. Tell but, uh, the animals to eat this the berries. is just one of the uh, evergreens. Uh, we do have a lot of trees that maintain some degree of chlorophyll I year round. I never thought about it as an evergreen. Now evergreen. you've seen hollies. We know the pines. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of the firs are evergreen. I didn't, that's interesting. I never put that together. This is an evergreen tree. Well, we do. And we're going to, we may even get a chance to see some of the really cool evergreens oh, fun. that are up here. Uh, we have things like mountain laurel, which is an evergreen and uh, things like that. Now it doesn't mean, by the way, um, all of these leaves, and I've mentioned this on several occasions, there is chlorophyll in here. Mm -hmm. And chlorophyll is an interesting, uh, it's a composition that's made out of, uh, it's a hydrocarbon, hydrogen, carbogen, Hydrogen, carbon, carbogen. oxygen. <laughs> oh, as long as we're inventing words. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> we had surgerized. Surgerized. <laughs> surgerized. We but we also, uh, it also has uh, magnesium and. Uh, really? Yeah, and uh, uh, nitrogen. So when we talk about fertilizing uh, things like that, we, my, nitrogen yeah. and magnesium are t and usually phosphorus are some of those because that's what makes the plant stay green. Nice. So uh, this one. It's getting late enough in the wintertime, early enough yeah. in the spring, that uh, the uh, chlorophyll is starting to lose kind of peat, peat some of bit. its green. And uh, the, if we come back here in the summer, this will be beautiful. Bright green. Well, we'll have, maybe we'll do that. Yeah. Do you guys want to go out and take a little look around uh, and see Let's what else do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's see what's going on. Lead on. I did. March 4th. <laughs> Onward. <laughs> he just went Onward. March 
four. <laughs> I got it. Well done. Come well, on, Bob. Well done. Come on, neighborhood naturalist. Uh, hey, I am you. a little confused. Yes. When we came up, we saw that there were trail markers. Okay. Bob, there's two here. Yeah. Why hey. are there two of these markers? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna get confused. Don't get confused. It's nope. actually to help alleviate some of the confusion. Mm, I need as much help as I can get. Well, for the longest time, we only, uh, on all the trails here on zoo property, we use the rectangular blue markers. This one. The one at the top, yes. And we've expanded the trails up here. Yeah, you, and they've done some really neat work up here, by Absolutely. the way. Absolutely. But one of the things we noticed on one of the newer trails, the Laurel Trail, we may get there a little later, but okay. on the Laurel Trail, uh, we could be standing on the Laurel Trail and we could see the blue markers from the next trail up the mountain. And we thought, hmm, oh, this will get people confusing. might be getting... So they've now been color-coded. So oh, this the one. rectangular blue is the purgatory trail. The round orange markers are now designed. That is the middle mountain trail. This is middle mountain. Right. So when you see a double marker like that, that simply means you're at an intersection. And that's what it looks like here. Even yeah. I can see that. We can go this way. Or we can go that way. That's right. And if you look down that way, you'll see the round orange markers. Oh, I'm sorry, Leslie. Yeah, nice. And if you stay on the gravel trail, the trail we were on, you'll notice you can see the blue markers on nice. it there. So that tells us we're on the purgatory trail or uh, where Leslie's looking right now. We happen to be looking up. Which way do you want to go, Bob? We want to go Mill Mountain or we want to go Purgatory Trail? I see there's, there's the same thing I want to talk about on both of these because it's kind of unique. Well, if that's the case, then I'd suggest let's go Stay on. Stay Purgatory? Yeah, March 4th. Purgatory. March 4th down here real quick, guys. We're going to head down. So this is really neat. And it's a good hike. And it's a relatively, I don't want to say it's simple, easy hike. But you can come and do it and you can get a nice little workout. You can. And we, we refer to this trail as moderately strenuous. Moderately? One of the reasons is if you look down, you'll notice we have roots. And you do need to pay mm -hmm. attention because you can trip on these roots. I have the t-shirt for that. You'll also you earned notice that shirt, Bob. You that, earned it, Nathan. That's it. You'll also notice lots of loose rocks. Yeah. And this gets more profound the higher up we go and on different trails. One of our jobs, we get out here to do trail maintenance. We actually have to clear out some of these loose rocks really? from time to time. Yep. And our guests, digital friends, they can come here and not have to go to the zoo. Absolutely. You can walk this trail and not have to go into the zoo. Yes. The trails are open every day of the year. Uh, and that's between 7 o'clock in the morning and 7.30 in the evening. Oh, check that. 7 to 7.30. Right. You can access them through parking lot A in the North America parking area. So North America. That's good to know. You don't have to go inside the zoo. And there's no charge for uh, using our trails. Even better. Even better. A day like today with beautiful blue skies. Oh, it's stunning. You should get out here and check everything out. Uh, I have a feeling the sweatshirts are going to go away before <laughs> we go back down. That I'm, makes sense. I'm already almost there. Okay. <laughs> What'd you say, Leslie? I said, I'm already almost there for <laughs> no sweatshirt. That's awesome. This is what I want to talk about, Bob. This What's tree that? that's still brown. I thought trees that were <coughs> deciduous. Ooh, okay. Trees that lose their leaves. <laughs> your teeth, your baby teeth, non by the way. Never, non deciduous evergreen. teeth. Mm -hmm. Deciduous non teeth. Yeah. <laughs> I've never used that reference before. Well, you know, hey. So this is kind of a cool tree. Okay. Digital guests, can you see that? Now, look, all the other trees that are supposed to leave, and I'm going to put it in quotes, that lose their leaves every year, have already done so. As we said, this is March. Mm -hmm. They're actually getting ready to start blooming yep. again. This tree never lost its leaves. What kind of tree is this? Well, this one, uh, as I mentioned with the holly, uh, I, I'm going to pluck yeah, this legal. leaf off. Uh, as I mentioned with the holly, that uh, chlorophyll is the pigment. It's the green pigment that causes leaves to stay green. Now there's a holly right behind us here, but um, this one lost its chlorophyll. Why? Because a lot of times the moisture in the tree yeah. has sort of, it's, it's, it's sequestered right. itself in the roots and under the ground because that's a much more stable place. That's what deciduous trees do. So they're pulling that stuff down into the roots and then they can grow later. So the normal color of this leaf is brown. Those are the pigments. Wait, wait, when, wait, wait, wait. The normal color is brown? That's right. But not the green I see in the summer? The green, it's when Whoa. there's moisture up in the tree and it actually gets the chlorophyll going. Really? The green becomes a more dominant pigment 
and, and that's what I green. see. Now the reason this still has leaves on it is because it's a beech tree. A beech tree. A beech tree. So this I know when you we when we said we were going to come up the mountains, you had no idea we we're going to go to the beach. I know. I was like, hey, are you Bob? This is. <laughs> I assume it's not spelled the same. No. And uh, this is B E E C H. E E. Okay. And the beech trees, um, they uh, really they cool. they hold their leaves yeah. uh, through the winter, and uh, when in the springtime, when the new leaves start to come out, they'll actually push the old ones out. Oh, they just kind of shove them out. You're That's done. That's it. Yeah. It's like you know, hey, you, it was great. You stuck around for the winter, so people could figure out what kind of tree we are. It's time <laughs> to go. Good deal. All right. Well, if you're game, can yeah. we, let's continue walking. Guys, Absolutely. stay tuned. See what else we can find. Okay. Come on. Digital friends, I got a test for you. Leslie's going to pan through the canopy. Look to see the difference. Do you hear the wind? So Bob, you were talking about, this was a great place to talk about something called a transition. Yep. What does that mean? That uh, naturally, um, bare ground does not like to stay bare ground. Okay. Nature comes in and it actually goes through a whole series of what are called successional stages. And that's the, that kind of progression. Yeah, the okay. basic idea, and we, we, we teach it this way from time to time, is what's called old field succession. So if we came in okay. and we actually had a farm field that was here mm -hmm. and it was plowed and it was tended and it kept the, the, we'll call them weeds. What's a weed? A weed is a flower that's unintended. That's it. So we, we've kept the weeds out. We've kept all the plants that were unintended from growing. Right. And after a while we decide I've had enough. I'm not going to plow this field anymore. Okay. And you just leave it alone. Somebody comes up and a lot of times the, the first things will be grasses. Sure. They're native grasses and things like that. Then you'll start to get some shrubs around here. We'd get blackberry vines. Oh, We'd get a, yeah. a, a, a thorny vine called Smilax or cat briar mm -hmm. that would come up. The first trees to come up are going to be pines. Really? That's it. So ultimately, as time okay. goes by. Grasses, shrubs, pines. Grasses, shrubs, pines, and then hardwoods. Hardwoods specifically here it would be oak and hickory okay. are going to be the tallest most dominant trees that tells you when the forest is mature interesting we call it the climax vegetation oh the end the, the top the climax right the, okay so when you look at the top of the trees like leslie was doing mm -hmm. here and like we're doing you notice that there's not a lot of leaf cover or pine needles over yeah when they when she direction. started uh -uh. but when you come over here there are and what that tells us when we read the forest is that that area over there has been disturbed in the not too distant future. Oh, so you can learn some of the forest by what's around. Absolutely. So when we have oh. pine trees over here, now these are taller pines. Yeah. So this may be 10 to 25 years or so that those have been growing. Okay. But it's still younger tree cover than, than what's, what's over, over there. Because this is a dominated by hardwoods. Absolutely. The end of the trees that lose their leaves. Now, what could cause that? It could have been a fire, a lightning strike fire. Oh, sure. Okay. So it's Believe, not always. And animals. Really? Absolutely. Well, how can animals do that? Well, we talk about this from time to time in Africa, and people don't realize it happens here as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. African animals, specifically elephants, maintain grasslands. They keep them from growing up into being forests. Why? They eat the plants, and they stomp on the plants. So here, it might be like the bison and the elk. Absolutely. On the plant. And that's but so neat. You, you mentioned that. Now, what would we have called the habitat for the native bison, the eastern bison, and the elk that would have lived here long, long ago? Would, did they have a habitat type that we could talk about? I would call it a prairie. Yeah. That's what, that's what they live on now. Absolutely. It's a Piedmont prairie because at the time... Oh, Piedmont. Okay. Yeah, we're in the Piedmont, the middle part of North Carolina. Technically, we're in the mountains. These are the Uari Mountains. <gasps> This there is are, the Uari Mountains? These are the Uari Mountains. What? There are no mountains anywhere in the United States, in North America, this old, this tall. So when we put enough qualifiers on it... it <laughs> We're an only. I'm a genius. No, uh, <laughs> but um, the, the Piedmont Prairies would have been dominant here right up until the time when English settlers would have gotten here. Okay. And part of the reason why 
was because of the bison and elk. They were food they sources were for the people who would have lived here. They kept yeah, the, the area, indigenous folks that were already really relying on those animals. Absolutely. They would have kept the area more of a grassland, okay. Piedmont Prairie. Um, when the Europeans came in in the late 1500s, 1585, 1587, uh, two things happened. They looked out and said, good food as far as uh, uh, being able to options. eat the bison. And because it's this beautiful grassland, it must be good farmland. And... So they moved in and took it over as farmland. The animals went away. We no longer yeah. have eastern bison. We don't have eastern elk except for a small pocket of population, I believe, in the Smokies. In the Smokies, yeah. So that was what would have kept this area okay. a little bit more grassy nice. at the time. Okay. What happens when, when, when the succession changes? Ultimately, certain plants go away. What's that term? Extinction? Yeah. So uh, really? we have endangered so plants that really? can be found up that way. Really? Really. Can we go, find, can we go see if we can find them? Yeah. Let's go. That's what our neighborhood naturalist Bob is talking about. Nature finds a way. Nature is going to kind of take over this. That's a bare rock. So this is the beginning of the lifespan of the forest. Having this these algae, these lichen, all these kind of things growing on the bare rock. Everything has a lifespan. I have a lifespan. You guys have a lifespan. Animals, plants, trees, even forests. And that's what you were talking about, Bob, in that idea of that transition. Yeah, absolutely. That uh, when, when we talk about a lifespan uh, with plants, in some cases in the transitional stages, in the successional stages, what shortens a life is access to the sun so oh sure as the pines come in and the pine trees start to grow up the shrubs and the grasses have less access to the sun mm -hmm. they either have to uh have to have seeds and move okay uh they don't move themselves physically there is one that does and uh they don't move themselves physically but they they let their offspring go yeah, someplace, go somewhere else. else but once they get crowded Just out like there is more sun that the, the, their stuck. life is done you're stuck their, their particular purpose as a forest plant is no longer around. Makes sense. Now, it is, you know, plants are constantly fighting for access to, to the sun. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes they, uh, uh, you know, you, you'll have a natural change that'll happen, a fire. Yep. And all of those seeds that have been hiding in the dirt for years. Oh, they now have go, a chance. Oh, nice. And, uh, we, you know, we can come up and we can become part of the, nice. the forest again. I think it's just so interesting to think that there's a lifespan involved here. Why did you want to come here, Bob? Well, you said you wanted to stop here for a sec. Absolutely. That uh, we, we were mentioning the bison and yeah, the Piedmont prairies. And one of the plants that was on the brink of extinction, at least in this part of North Carolina, was this little yellow sunflower that you see pictured here, known as the Schweinitz sunflower. What kind of sunflower, Leslie? Schweinitz. Schweinitz sunflower. Right? right? Yeah. Schweinitz. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And uh, the, it's only because he said it. Yeah. <laughs> these were these were uh, Piedmont That's prairie flower. plants. And okay. So it's hard to see it, Leslie, unless we go down there. But it's, if you can uh, focus off in the distance, there's an area down there that's very, very open. And it oh, has... Like a, like a prairie. Absolutely. There's not as much tree cover down in there. And we maintain that. We'll come in and cut it in the off-season. Sometimes we'll do a controlled burn. Okay. That's a, a oh, fire... Oh, well, we burn on purpose. Yes, it's a no fire that's done on purpose to, to uh, uh, you know, kill the plants that would absolutely... That would shade the uh, Schweinitz away gotcha. and stuff like that. So when the zoo uh, acquired this property back in about 1972 mm -hmm. or thereabouts, uh, and we started learning more about these plants, we realized there were smaller little pockets of them all around Randolph County. Oh, okay. So we would actually go out and get permission from property owners to dig them up and bring them here and plant them on our property so that we could actually protect this particular flower. So are we always one of these 12 counties? Yes. That's amazing. Yeah, the Only central, 12 counties in North Carolina and a little bit in South Carolina. Yeah, uh, that uh, it's it's very, very wow. rare. There are a lot of really cool plants that are found up here. Um, not just uh, uh, some of the ones we were talking about when we were walking up the hill. I was checking a pine tree out. You were, yeah, I saw you over there. I was like, what are you doing, neighborhood naturalist? You're being, <laughs> you're doing your job. We were checking to make sure what <laughs> to see what kind of pine tree it was. And you said it was a pine tree, it was a short leaf pine? Short leaf pine. Mm -hmm. And we'll find those all over the place. There is a longleaf pine. 
That it's one I'm familiar the, with. It's the state tree. Uh, isn't that, wasn't that one of our mottos for years here? It's the land of the longleaf pine. If you, you do great things in North Carolina, you get nominated. Longleaf pine and you, award. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. You become the order of the longleaf that's pine. That's right. It's a symbol of our state. But here in this part of the state, you don't ever see them. Oh. We do have a piece of that's property where we have a plantation full of them. <laughs> that's Maybe another Maybe we'll take day. you there one of these days because that's really <laughs> neat. Especially in the summertime, because there's there's wildlife, there's amazing plants that are out there, some really cool stuff to see. Absolutely. The first time I went down there uh, a couple of years ago, uh, when I had to change the locks on the gate. And uh, <laughs> when, when I went down there, I had to shoo a bunch of wild turkeys out of the way. To no make, kidding. Know, they were standing outside the gate. Hey, That's can neat. we get in there, Mr. Bob? That's cool. Yeah. So, and this is something that has grown here at the zoo. Um, oh... 15 feet tall yep remember that's that's two, that's three you leslie i know i'm short okay you're five feet tall <laughs> but remember we, you know we we've talked and and you and leslie and wendy have all talked about all of the protections we do for animals whether mm -hmm. they're making sure that oh animals that's a that great point here, bob great point. whether they're the ones that live here have the best quality of life possible how we take care of their wild cousins and yep. field projects but remember plants are very important without plants most of those animals either don't have a place Absolutely. to live Absolutely. or don't have anything to eat great great point i love that because it, it's the space that's just as important as the individual mm -hmm. animal itself if there's no place for it to be mm -hmm. no place for it to live grow up do its animal thing Mm -hmm. Then we have a problem. Yeah. Plants make up the habitat. I love it. And, uh, and now I take that back. Not always, but for the most part, because your friends, the polar bears. Yeah, well. Now, if it weren't for the, the little microscopic plants floating around in the ocean water that are eaten by the little krills and, and the that's, fish. But that's and all stuff. part of the cycle. It is. That's it's all part of, the part of the cycle. I love it. All right, good deal. All right, we're gonna, you're going to show them a map here in yep. a second. So let's cut out for a moment and tune back in. Stay tuned. So we'll show you a map of this entire place. It's neat. Leslie, 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 you got a little ahead of us. There's a sign here that says, Caution, Motor Vehicle Traffic Ahead. And Digital Friends, we just wanted you to know that although you're not going into the zoo, you're still at the zoo. So there is a road at the very bottom, trailhead-ish? Yeah, on, of this, this trail. on this side of the road, uh, the trail is pretty rugged. Yeah. Uh, we say it's, it's moderate. I think, what did I say that? Moderate strength, moderately Moderate strenuous. strenuous. On the other side, it's actually been graded and leveled out so that if you have anybody that has any sort of mobility issues or anything like that, you can walk on that. It's actually wheelchair accessible. Oh, it is. So on the other side, it's not very long. It's about an eighth of a mile, which is kind of interesting because if you can look at uh, our map here, Steve. Okay, yeah. Where uh, you see this first part on this map, uh, that's the eighth of a mile on the other side of the road. So and this, this is on the, okay. Yeah, and this is actually the part that is completely accessible. I love that. It's wide, it's got really, really fine gravel on it, so it packs, it's a good firm surface. Okay. We watch that very carefully to make sure we don't have limbs or loose rocks or anything on that. Nice. Once you get across the road. Oh, so here's the road. Yep, this is the road. Okay. That's your service road. Once you get across this and you start up the hill this way, that's when we run into some of the steeper terrain. It's where we run into I the loose see. rocks, right, the right. roots, and things like that. Now, this map will soon be replaced. Because you guys it, have doing some, you and Betsy, right, have been doing yep. some really amazing work on the trails. Betsy with some Rosnick. help, Steve. Oh, yeah, we, we have a volunteer, Steve, who is just absolutely our champ up here absolutely. as far as uh, doing things. We've had volunteer groups from Randolph Community College. Oh, thanks, guys. Ashboro High School, FFA have come out, and they've had numerous days when they help us with these uh, things. So what you see right now is you see the Purgatory Trail. Okay, So it's, that's what uh, we were on. We were on the Purgatory Trail. Where this cuts off, this is actually the Middle Mountain Trail. Oh. And this map only shows it going about this far to the top of Middle Mountain. Mm -hmm. Actually, a saddle in between Purgatory and Middle Mountain. Okay. It now goes all the way over this way. Uh, and uh, there's a trailhead off Waddell Country Road. So our friends, our digital friends, it might be in the area. Yep. There you go. Yep. This uh, trail you see right here that only goes halfway around the top of Purgatory yep. Mountain called the Moonshine Run. The Moonshine Run. There's a story. Yeah, we might have to tell that story. We will, and uh, uh, we I can show you evidence of how that got its name at some point in the future. Nice. We're completing this trail coming around the top. It doesn't quite follow this path anymore. Okay. So I've had uh, groups that have worked. We've got it cleared about to here. Nice. And uh, so we have another work day coming up a little bit later on in March. 
so we get an opportunity to uh, uh, get up and be outside and uh, anytime I can work outside oh it's better than sitting at the desk let me said for that I think as educators and especially being naturalists and being mm -hmm. uh, informal educators we'd love to be outside it looks like we are right about here today yep somewhere in somewhere in there so we didn't actually get too far no, on the actually we're path. probably right about here now or then right now oh right now yeah, yeah. then earlier we got to here yes ish right plus or minus I'm sorry I didn't say it very clear halfway up Whew. yeah man and we're done <laughs> But there's so much more to share, so much more to do. And I think it'll be really fun as, as things begin to bloom um, to see some more work out there. It's going to be exciting. And maybe, maybe we'll tell you a little about purgatory. Do you think you guys would want to come back up here with us? <laughs> I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead. Let's, 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 let's tell them a little bit about purgatory. Okay. Let's do a little bit of that because we can't leave you hanging that long. <laughs> okay. Well, which story Purgatory you... Trail. Purgatory, now, purgatory Trail. Purgatory Mountain, Purgatory Trail. Why purgatory? Okay, how well versed are you in uh, that? Uh, my 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 wife is Catholic, and so okay. in the Catholic tradition, uh, purgatory is, for lack of a better way of putting it, it's a holding pattern. It's where okay. you're you're waiting before your eternal soul has uh, has been judged and sent to where it's going to spend the rest of its life. Okay. So for the longest time, uh, purgatory is kind of a, a poorly known place. When I was coming down here that in the sense. summertime, even in the summer, uh, this mountain, when you could see it from Zoo Parkway, had fog that would hang oh, around the top. Oh, so it was kind of eerie. Kind of eerie. Kinda not sure what's going on. That's it. And some of the folks locally had figured out a way yes. to use that mist and that fog to hide certain things. <gasps> Moonshine Trail. Absolutely. <laughs> now, remember, uh, up until about 2008 or 2009, Ashboro, North Carolina was the largest municipality east of the Mississippi River that had no alcohol sales. Yeah, we were a dry can, dry city for a long time. Officially. <laughs> Unofficially. <laughs> I love that. Officially. <laughs> officially. Unofficially. There's folklore that gives the Moonshine Run its name. I love that. There was, at one point, some substantial, unauthorized whiskey manufacturer that went on up Got there. Got you. And you could use the uh, mist and the fog to hide your smoke and steam and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But if you came down here looking for it yep. and you weren't authorized to be here, sometimes you didn't come back. Right. You were hung up in purgatory. Nice. I love it. That's one of the legends. And one of the th one quick kind of play off of that, one thing that I used to hear sometimes too, was that the stills, the fire by the light of the still, would be seen in the distant wood. But did you really want to investigate a place called Purgatory with fires going on? No. Maybe not. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bob. That was great. Folklore, we, we've, we've all been here and... We leave a little bit of history whenever we go. Well said. And that's just some of the history going back a few years. I love it. That's so great. Well, our neighborhood naturalist, Bob, thank you very much. Uh, your zoo adventures team, a little bit of a different type of adventure for you today. And we were happy that you guys stuck around to enjoy that little trail walk with us. Uh, your zoo adventures team today, Steve was in front of the camera today. The wonderful Leslie behind. Oh, well, thank you. Hello, everybody. <laughs> you made a great journey today, Leslie. Some amazing pans you did today. Thank you, so, and I did not trip. You did not trip. Well said. Yes. <laughs> I, I wish I could say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, we hope, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we do hope to see you again down the road. Tune in Mondays and Wednesdays at when, up, Mondays and Wednesdays at 10 o'clock, and we'd love to see you. Remember, the zoo is open. Uh, time tickets. Make those online reservations. We're asking you to wear that mask. And this again is for the, for the protection of you, protection of us and the staff, and the animals as well. Stay safe, and we'll see you again soon. Bye, y'all. <laughs>